It's WAN show time! Hooray! Okay, oh man. I am like sweating right now. You we just had did a thing. We had a bit of a situation before the show. Um, Quite the so, disaster. So that video will probably be up in about, a, I guess, about a week or so after editing. Um, yeah? Yeah. So there's some pretty big news for this week. SourceFed is gone. Exploded. Um, and I, I actually, I have, even though I've never really watched the show, um, Brendan, can you just tilt us up a bit? Our belly buttons are showing. I don't think Twitch yeah, yeah, yeah. allows the mid-rift uh, mid yeah. show. Yeah. Um, so, our, uh, what was I saying? Right, right, right. So I have quite a bit to say about that because I've actually kind of modeled our business after SourceFed. So, uh, SourceFed specifically? There's a hint. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, well, it was, it was nice being on the show with you guys. Yeah. I guess we look for another job. Um, there's a lot more Ryzen news this week. Uh, how how unexpected related. Yeah. What else we got? I love how, one thing before I keep going, I love how our Ryzen news for the last few weeks has been like one of X yeah. amount. <laughs> Just <laughs> like, these are the many Ryzen topics that there are, uh, which is good because we have something to talk about. Twitter might build a paid subscription service for power users. And <sighs> we're gonna announce it right now. Yeah, we'll, 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 we're gonna announce that we're gonna announce it. There is a big announcement coming in probably about 14 minutes. Should no, I no, we way? can say what it is, but not okay. not that um, not any of the details around what okay. will happen in about 14 minutes. Scrapyard Wars Five. Yeah, is planned and is happening like imminently, very very soon. As in like. A couple days, not a couple months or a couple weeks. Yeah. I'm still not quite sure how we're gonna do. I think I've got a plan. Uh, okay. But I'll try to like work on I fix it. Oh. So chat. I just won't be able to hear. Moss! Oh, that But would, you can monitor through the That thing. would be terrible. Um, you know what? We will figure it out live. Yeah. Because that's what we do. Do it live! Do, do you it have, live do you from the side of the road. Two headphone outputs on there, and are they both quarter inch? Uh, I have I have a thing that I, I watched someone set up two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> it has monitoring ports though, right? Uh, yes. Two of them? Um... Cool. So someone yeah. moved the monitors that are supposed oh to be left God. here, and so the ones that are plugged into the port that the monitors would are that be the adapter be jack right there then? Maybe, uh, but also also probably not. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, so we're not sure how we're gonna have that call, but we're not gonna explain what that call is. So yes. Uh, so uh, first topic of the day. Why don't we? Why, can, can we jump right into? Uh, can we jump right into SourceFed? Sure. Okay. So yeah. uh, SourceFed. Uh, uh, shutting down. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up their source fed is shutting down. It's on Reddit. It's on Amplify. What? Well, where, 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 where is the actual video? It's it's not in the doc, so I don't have a link for you guys. But there's a, there's a Philip DeFranco video, right? Is that what you're talking about? No, no, the one where like the hosts are all. Oh, here it is. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so Linus's screen. Is that just a capture of the thumbnail and not an embed? <laughs> really? <laughs> Real, uh, there, there you go. There we go. Yeah. Because that that shouldn't that couldn't just be at the top. Um, so basically, here are a bunch of hosts, none of whom I recognize, no. and um, they're sad because they all lost their jobs. Uh, apparently, there were about forty people working at SourceFed at this point. Forty people. That's sort of insane. So the history behind SourceFed is that, uh, and you'll have to correct me if I got this wrong, because I've as much as I've sort of modeled some of what we do here after it. I, um, how do I say this? I, I, I have never actually watched a full episode of SourceFed. Yeah, so how have you done that? I don't Well, understand. no, this isn't, okay, okay. So, so you got, look, There's a live stream right look, now. Look, just, just watch this. Yeah, one. this is their final live stream. But no, yeah, Watch this one. Yeah, watch this live we'll stream. We'll talk about theirs. That one will be archived. Yeah. Uh, Discovery has already come out and said they're not removing the videos, so you'll have plenty of opportunities to go watch that live stream later. Um, but basically, in a, okay, right, 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 right. 
Sorry, I'm very scattered right now. I've been kind of running around. Okay. And, there's there's <sighs> some crazy stuff went down. You okay. guys will see a video about it in about a week. So remember how we talked, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, about how I modeled WAN Show after some other tech podcast that I had never watched. Yeah, okay, yeah. Like three weeks ago? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So basically, it's me kind of... <laughs> so here's a name and a description. I'll base a company off of it. Well, no. No, it's not basically a company off of it. It's... It's I viewed SourceFed as a validation that the model yeah. of bringing a group of people together and um, creating multiple channels, but rather than through a multi-channel network, like an MCN that is just acting as sort of in an agency role Having for a, a bunch of independent that runs all the different channels instead of a company that like does things for all the different channels. Yes, and so I, I kind of looked at that and I went, okay, they're making it work. They've, they're, they're making this, this they're, they're able to monetize it effectively enough that they've managed to keep the lights yeah. on. So they were like a proof of okay, concept I remember these talks now. for me. Yeah. Um, and, and now they're gone. <laughs> So basically what, what happened... So and we gotta follow the trend. Yeah, you'll have to... No. You'll have to correct me. Or you'll have to bear with me if I get some of the details wrong because I, I, I didn't really follow the channel. I think it's like news or something. And yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Phil DeFranco, who had a news show way back a zillion years ago, sort of one of like the YouTubers, you know, it was like... He still does. Ray, well, I know, well, I know he does now, but he's not like the guy anymore it's like we're talking back when ray william johnson was the top subscribed channel on youtube you right. would utter phil defranco's name in the same breath like these guys were the og big youtubers he's getting like yeah he's big again channel? but he's not even a, like you think he's an order of magnitude behind pewdiepie but the amount of views per video that he's getting yep is putting him up there so. he's he's doing like he had kind of fallen off the rails a bit and he's doing really well again anyway the point is He's OG, and back when Google did an initial round of funding big creators to create um, like Is custom it? content for the platform. This? What's that? He does this like, this thing, do you see that? Oh, the thing that he does in his thumbnails? He does that in like every thumbnail. Illuminati? Oh. Maybe that's it. Maybe you figured it out. You know yes. what? This, the show's probably How to survive gonna get, on YouTube. The show's going to get pulled down now yeah. because we've uncovered the secret. I mean, yeah. you know that the SWAT team is right outside that door, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, because they're cool with us because that's how we got here too. You said you modeled it after SourceFed. That's where the source is. Oh, Lord. We only made it as a company because of the... The source. Yeah. yeah. We were fed by the source. Anyway, yeah. the yeah. source also is shutting down. <laughs> so there's that. Source by Circuit City. Don't name your name. Yeah. Don't name your company yeah. something to do with yeah. Source. Source Source seems to be a bad bad uh, bad place to top bad place to head. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. So he got funding to start up SourceFed. Completely different channel also based around like daily news. Very very quick up to date daily news. Yeah. Um, from there they expanded dramatically. Um, I don't remember what happened first. Um, Phil getting the offer from Discovery Network or D3 or Discovery Channel, whatever, Discovery. Phil getting the offer from Discovery to become like an exec of some sort there, and then they acquired the show or something like that. Or I don't know if that happened first, or they started up the other shows under the SourceFed umbrella, like SourceFed Nerd. Yeah, I also don't know, but I think yeah. they were acquired first. Okay, but all that stuff kind of happened. And they had kind of a good thing going on. They were, you know, uh, Sexy Phil's channel. So the, his original channel was kind of eh, doing okay. But like SourceFed was growing. SourceFed Nerd was growing real fast. And everything was going gangbusters. And then, you know, I don't know how these things happen. But the, the hosts of SourceFed got so popular that they were just like, peace, bruh. I'm going to go indie. And, um, like all of them. Yes, literally. Yeah. Literally all of them. And uh, and what happened was it, it became kind of a revolving door. Even at their height, I couldn't really figure out what the, the monetization model was there. Because Brandon actually worked on a live show yeah. that they did here. You knew that, right? Yep. Yeah, so he was like, he actually has a clause in his contract that, um, oh no, I wasn't calling you. <laughs> oh, okay, he has like a non-compete clause in his contract where like, he can't sort of run around working with other YouTubers willy-nilly, but he was like, 
I really like these guys. Uh, they need a camera guy. They're going to be it's, like here doing a show. Yeah, they were like touring. Like this was like a yeah. one-time thing. He was like, "Can I do it?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's super cool." And what's the funny thing is, I actually ended up um, taking his ticket and going on a date with Brandon's girlfriend because. <laughs> oh, this is the story you're telling. Yeah. Me? <laughs> I'm like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought you heard your name and came running out here. No. Yeah, I was talking about you. Um, were your ears burning? <laughs> Um, so, so Brandon bailed on his girlfriend yeah. to actually camera op for their live show, and, and I took his seat because I was like really curious because, like I said, I, I was really interested yeah. in their business model. And yeah. I was like, oh, these live shows, this is kind of interesting. Um, so anyway, he discovered at that time that they had like 40, 50 people working there. And this is at a time w when we had five, I think. Back then, it, if, if it wasn't five, it was six I, or I something. I think it was OGs plus Terran. I don't she might actually know things about SourceFed. Oh, oh, seriously, this okay. Might legitimately be helpful. Well, here, here we go. It's happening again. Uh, uh, yeah, hi, hi, Mrs. Lafreniere. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, I was great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just phoning to say that I have watched Bill DeFranco since he started with his backwards baseball cap and one sparkly earring and i've She's been a fan of many years i've been a fan of his forever and ever he's great really loved him he hand-picked the original source fed troop um and it was an awesome awesome show and then of course he he hasn't had anything to do with it for a few years which in my opinion is why maybe it didn't keep going well but i just wanted to shout out phil franco i've been watching him forever and he's awesome Okay, so okay. so the hidden message here then is that you want me to make sure that I'm micromanaging everything at LMG no. so that it doesn't explode. Is that, is that what Mom Lafreniere is, is kind of throwing at me? Because I'm picking that up. Except no, I think you're not smelling very good what I'm cooking here, Lionel. <laughs> 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 All right, got it, got it. Read you loud and clear. Phil is better than me, and... Um, his influence is good and mine is bad. Now, now am I am I closer? You are not picking up what I'm putting down at all. <laughs> okay, what's up, oh. Mom? <laughs> no, I I just shout now, Phil. I watched him because uh, when he started out, he was sort of the the same age as you and your brother, and I wanted to be up on what was going on in your lives. So I watched him, and I've watched him grow and get married and have kids, and he's an awesome dude. Do you That's have any comments about say. about SourceFed? I liked SourceFed when he was running it, and as soon as he stepped away, in in my opinion, uh, it wasn't the same, and it wasn't, it didn't have the integrity that it had once he left. Okay. Got it. All right. Okay. So Thanks, there Mom. you have it. There you have it, kids. That, Bye. my friends, Bye. is how to relate to your children. Okay. And yep. be like up on what's going on in in their lives. She, is watching the same shows they do. Seriously, she was hardcore about it too. Like, yeah. I remember there was one time. I've probably said this story on Wan a long, long, long time ago. But uh, my dad yelled across from the house asking if I wanted to go to the bank, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Yeah." And we both just sat there, and Mom went and got ready, and then was like standing by the door, and he's like, "Are we gonna go to the bank?" And we were talking about the bank in World of Warcraft. Oh. And then, so that was the day that she decided to just play it to figure out what was going on. She got to level like 40 or something, and she was like, okay, yeah, I get it. She played Skyrim too, just because I really liked the Elder Scrolls games. So she yeah. was like, I'll figure out what's going on here. Mom's always been gung-ho about things. Thanks we, for calling, Mom. Yeah, we've got Twitch chat saying you should do the same drugs your kids do. I think that was really not where we were going with no. that. At no. all. No. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> no. Experiencing similar content and doing <laughs> yeah. drugs is not the yeah, same not thing. Not the same thing, okay. Rise in news. Yes. There is uh, some rise in news this week. Loads. So it looks like, uh, let's go ahead and uh, pull this up. Uh, this was originally posted. Okay, no, no, good. don't worry, I'm good. This was originally posted on the forum by Doc Swag, who has one of the better usernames that I think I have yet encountered on that the forum. Pretty good. And this is, um, so the, the source here is from r slash AMD. Let's go ahead and pull that up here. And it was a response from AMD talking about uh, Infinity Fabric, how the CCX modules are hooked up to the integrated memory controllers, and basically the, the, the summary here, so the important bits, is that the Infinity Fabric connects 
each CCX two, and so those are those are so the eight cores have multiple CCXs, so two four core CCXs. They're kind of like modules or something. Um, so each CCX to uncore, so not processing core devices like memory controllers, PCI Express controllers, SATA USB, etc. It's a 256-bit bidirectional crossbar and runs at the speed of the memory controller. So effectively, increasing your memory speed increases the clock speed of the Infinity Fabric. This is enlightening for a number of reasons. So number one is that it was pretty confusing to me that it had been a long, an awful long time since system memory had been any kind of a bottleneck in a desktop workload. An awful long time. And all of a sudden, Ryzen comes in and all of a sudden, you know, you know, AMD's putting together a guide for how to overclock Ryzen, like recommendations. They're like, yeah, we're really focused on like memory overclocking. I'm like, what? Memory overclocking? Are you kidding me? How's that? How's that important? You got dual channel DDR4. Isn't that an awful lot of memory clock? speed and so it turns out that it actually affects not just the communication between the cores the processing cores and the DRAM but also the communication between the processing cores very very interesting I'm setting up the call stuff oh you are well that's wonderful um, uh, Nick did you want something or that. oh okay yeah yeah don't worry yeah we're, working we're, on it we got right this now. Uh, if you want to like help Jake, I guess that's the only thing. Or don't. He's working on it. Doesn't matter. Uh, Jake is rounding some stuff up. <laughs> it's not, not. He's probably got it. It's not a big deal. All right. We've we, got we can, more Ryzen news. Yeah. So there's a fix coming. This was originally posted on the forum by. Uh, I'm just gonna have a look here. We haven't briefed James. James. I feel like he's my Newman right now. <laughs> James! <laughs> uh, we haven't briefed him on how to put the OP for the forum post in the doc so that we don't actually have to click it before we say that. Morgan NLG man. Okay, that's a pretty good username that's too. That's pretty solid. Yeah, oh, that man. I'm actually wow, we are we are getting some good I mean look look at this profile. That picture. profile picture is amazing. <laughs> I mean that is some uh, that is some dank AF oh, meme action that like Morgan MLG has got going on there. Anyway, so TLDR, the original source is heist.de. There's an FMA3 related bug in Ryzen CPUs which causes a hard system lock when running certain FMA3 workloads. So the problem was replicated across all three R7 processors released so far and tested on a variety of motherboards. It all started over on the hardware bot forums, but basically, there's a BIOS fix confirmed for the issue. AMD cool. is well aware of it, and Digital nice. Trends reported a first-hand talk with AMD about it, which you can check out at the link that I'm going to go ahead and drop in the Twitch chat. And this is a fun fact for those of you who don't check out the forum thread that's linked under the archive of the WAN show regularly, but you can find all the original links to the source articles for what we're talking about in the um, forum thread that we link underneath. More Ryzen news while Luke works on that. Dun, 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 dun. Original source here is overclock3d.net. Let's go ahead and pull that up and have a look at this. Whoa! AMD is rumored to have a 16 core, a 16 core Ryzen part that will reportedly run at 3.1 to 3.6 gigahertz max boost. I mean, Cooling a 180 watt part is pretty much guaranteed to require a water cooling solution of some sort. But I think this is pretty cool because when AMD did this, when they pulled out like an essentially an overclocked out of the box CPU, the 9590, that required water cooling, it shipped with a water cooler because there's no way you're gonna cool that otherwise. It looked like an act of desperation because the stupid thing was clocked like marginally higher than the air cooled one. So you could tell they were just, they were pushing the architecture to the limit only because they had nothing else that could compete. Now, now that Ryzen is a thing and it doesn't suck, 
Well, now they're just pushing it to the limit because freaking YOLO, man. That. That I can respect. That I'm down for. So, um, let's see if there's anything else that we, that we know about it. Uh, so this, uh, blah, 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 Ryzen engineering sample would blah, 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 blah. So it would offer performance similar to two R7 1700s. Um, it's rumored to be coming on AMD's X399 socket, though that is not necessarily the final name. And the word on the street is this new socket would be aimed at high-end PC users who require a large number of strong cores for productivity. So this sounds like a um, like an enthusiast workstation. I I would love for them to bring back four x four. That would be freaking amazing. Very that would be very cool. Um, okay, so do we have any idea if this is working? Like, what are we even plugged into? Is uh, that? Oh, working. okay. So I can I can hear me, but I don't know if I'm gonna hear them yet. That's yes. that's what I'm to understand. Yes. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think I do know how this is supposed to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand off uh, this topic to you uh, okay. from Level 1 Techs while I go get another piece that we're going to need before our special guests can join us. Are okay, they like standing so I, by? Or? I actually haven't seen They are somewhat standing by, oh, yes. Somewhat standing by. Uh, so I need to post this in the doc first, but this is actually super cool. So Level, level 1 Techs, you guys know Wendell. He split off or whatever. Don't worry about that stuff. But Level 1 Techs has the sixth fastest. I thought it was the first for a second there. But anyways, they have the sixth fastest 1800X build overall of any GPU type. This is the fastest build that uses a single 1080 Ti. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. So other people have done it with like a bajillion cards. But they were mainly showing off the processor. So this is on Level 1 Tech's site, if I just switch to my screen real quick. <laughs> yeah, sorry. There we go. No worries. That would have been smarter. No, it's cool. Um, <laughs> fastest Ryzen 1800X system in the world. That's with one GTX 1080 Ti, which I think is fair for them saying fastest Ryzen 1800X system because their whole point is that they're talking about the processor. And the only guys that they didn't beat are guys that used many GPUs when they used one. And SLI is kind of silly dilly anyways. So who really cares? This is them showing off their, their scores. This is them showing off the system. What the heck? They did it with an air cooler. I did not expect that. It's an NHD 15, which is like a beast machine air cooler, but I still didn't expect it. You have got to be kidding. You can disable like, the- Seriously, Windows? <laughs> Serious? I, like, I do not have time for that right now. You can disable your Windows Update service. Okay. And cancel the shutdown. Okay, yep. But it's annoying. Um, thing is if you don't do that it's gonna be stuck on restarting for like a bajillion years that being said if we do the call do you have anything to show on screen so what I just stopped the service I've never actually tried to stop it I'm it's never been quite this it might try to restart before. itself so you're probably gonna have to go to the Windows update thing and turn it off through <laughs> it's just killing the service it might it might restart the service Reasons why I'm no longer using Windows 10. Reasons why I'm, I'm working on it. it. I said it was going to take me forever, and then people are constantly tweeting me, being like, oh, are we going to see a video about that soon? No, it's going to take me a really long time, but I do want to get my Linux slash Windows gaming rig thing what? up. What the actual crap? Okay, you know what? I, I, I just don't even. I just don't even. Um, okay, so what I believe will happen now is if I set this playback device. Mine though, right? No, I don't think you're doing we can the call. use yours. Are you doing the call? Um, okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, 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 okay, just a sec. Oh, 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 sorry, that was probably pretty loud. I hope people heard that ding. If they heard that ding, then we're good. Did you hear the ding? Did everybody hear the ding? Do, 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 uh, can do, you take do, me do. off the... Oh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. There we go. Okay. Did, 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 did anybody hear the ding? Did they hear the ding? They heard the chime. They heard the chime. Okay, we're good. Okay. So uh, I got to go on Hangouts, and I got to add them, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Paul, Paul is waiting. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh that, that's a hint. That's a hint. Um... Um, I, 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 Sorry. uh, uh, but, uh, uh, the one that starts with the uh, P. Yeah, uh, uh, the, the, I'm working on it. The, uh, the PP one. <laughs> PP, PP, got it. Okay. Ooh. Um, you know what? Oh, you know this, what we should do? This, this. 
Where? Oh, seriously? Seriously? I have to. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I click to invite. Yes. Yes, I'm sending an invitation. Holy crap. Okay, well, while I wait for him to reply to the invitation, we've actually got our sponsor spots. I, this might be the most disorganized WAN show we've done in quite some time. Um, yes. All right, so first up is Moss. Moss Spring Cables. Oh, oh, wow. They have an entire, like, kit of, yeah. like, everything. Yeah. What is all and this stuff? And I think stuff? that bag is from them, too. What is all this stuff? So Fridge I, pack. What is a fridge pack? See, I asked the exact same thing, and then Colton looked at me and went, uh, this is why I'm not on WAN show. So I never actually figured that part out. Okay. Uh, but I'm excited. Regardless. Okay, so this is the Moss Pack. Power extended. What does this do? Uh, yeah, and that is, that is not in our notes. I'm going to go ahead and assume that this battery is a backpack? battery bank backpack, which would be... Or maybe it's just one that has like a spot for their stuff. I I hate Colton with every every ounce of my being. Okay. And that has never been more true than it is now in this moment. Never okay. been more the true. Pack. Plug in your backpack to charge all your devices. It has a built-in removable oh, cool. Moss Reach okay. extension cable. Okay, I found it. So that's the extension okay. cable. Okay, so the extension cable just come. Okay, so yeah. Okay, this is cool. So you undo the zipper here. And you pull out the extension cable, so you plug that into the wall, and then you've actually got two USBs and an AC outlet. Yeah. So if everything's plugged into this doodad, which hides in the back laptop compartment here, then boom, you just charge everything with a single cable. Okay, Ooh. so that's pretty straightforward. That's neat. What else they got? They've got, uh, okay, I gotta know what the mainos are. These are fridge, <laughs> fridge magnets. Can you read the notes? <laughs> oh, there you are notes not. under the other notes. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, I figured it out. Luke helped. <laughs> we got this. It includes. Okay, okay, that's okay. okay There's you know a water what, resistant Colton? water bottle pocket that holds up to a one liter water bottle. Yep, internal cable management straps and sleeves to keep your cables neat and tidy. Also, that water bottle thing is actually more important than you might think because storing water bottles in your bag while you're traveling and you have a laptop and a phone and a switch and a Game Boy and Check this out. whatever else in there. This is from my last trip. Do you see this? Um, All the water damage. This, this white mark here? Yeah. That was from uh, the pressure of the airplane going up, ah. busting the seals of my water bottle. Ah, not not fun. Not so fun. that's a thing. Yeah. Um. Okay. Cool. So the backpack's pretty cool. What else they got here? So there's the there's internal uh, cable management and stuff in there as well. This is one of their actual spring cables. They have a lifetime warranty on their cables with anodized aluminum heads with a steel spring reinforcement to prevent unwanted bending. That's right there on the end. Oh, okay. So it goes back so to- So it's a tension relief. Yeah. So it, so it doesn't break. And it also pushes itself back to where it wants oh, to okay. be. Okay, cool. Yeah. So these are cable organizers. So you stick them to anything. Oh, cool. And then they like- Oh, cool. When you're not using your wire, it That's holds it in place. That's a nifty way of doing that. I'm down with that. So that's pretty cool. And they come with little adhesive backing things. So you can use these like on your desk or whatever. So it comes with a pack of those. Okay, so I understand what this sponsor is now. It's like cables and like cable organization stuff. Okay, they've got HDMI cables. They've got uh, lightning cables. They've got these organizer things. Neat. So you can check out Moss products and have the same you know, voyage of discovery that we did. They also have this like really nice leather phone case and wallet and ID and cash holding thing. I think that's called a phone case. But it has all the other stuff too. That's good. So you can they check them out over at mossorganizer.com slash Linus. All right, our next sponsor is one that we are quite a bit more familiar with. Uh, given that we use these products every day and we aren't discovering that they exist for the first time right here now in this moment. iFixit, my friends. iFixit has fantastic guides and fantastic tools so that you can fix your you might hardware. You say they have pro yes, tech Yes, they have tools. pro tech. Yes, the pro tech toolkit is a professional tech tool. Yeah. Thank you for that. 
Um, they've got everything from their 64-bit driver kit to their suction cups for taking off displays to their spudgers for prying at things to their... Uh, Which, like, having good spudgers is underrated. Yeah, and the new ones are amazing. Yeah. Uh, and the new blue pry tools are, like, flipping amazing Those as well. Those blue pry tools is probably my personal favorite improvement in the new set. Yeah. Um, so anyway... The big news here for iFixit is not that they have great tools or great guides on their website that you can use to uh, save yourself some money, but it's that Canadians can now get cheaper shipping on iFixit tools. They're available now through Amazon.ca, so you can go check that out. If you're not Canadian, though, you can go to iFixit.com slash Linus and use code WANSHOW at the checkout to save 5 bucks on a purchase of $10 or more. What are you doing? <laughs> That, okay, so moving away from our last sponsor spot for just a moment here, that light is Brandon's fault. I was like, I will give you a budget to buy lights. And he's like, no, building this is better. <laughs> and I'm like, do you have any idea how heavy that's gonna be? <laughs> Brandon, do you have any idea how heavy that is? Yeah. Right yeah, <laughs> and you know how pinner Dennis is? <laughs> Dennis is working out. He's bulking up. You can be working out. You can be actively working out, and you can also be pinner. Fair, but he's you have to up. have. <laughs> he's working on it. Anyway, moving <laughs> on to our last sponsor, Zotac. Zotac. I mean, they, what do they not make? So we've got a bunch of different stuff that uh, that they want us to feature water, here. Water, and I would appreciate that. Because I feel like they'd have really like modular, cool water bottles. You can go get some water. I can finish this without your interruption, no, I think. <laughs> Just fine. <laughs> so they've got everything from the EN10. The EN10 series is one of the smallest VR-ready gaming mini PCs available. It's only 8.27 by 7 by 2.45 inches and can get up to a... Conf wow, it, get, it has a configuration available with up to a GTX 1070. Um, their VR Go is a backpack that's based on sort of the same idea of building a super compact, lightweight gaming machine, but this one goes on your back with up to two hours of playtime with two hot swappable batteries for nearly endless VR. And so it actually has like a, like a third supplementary battery so that you can hot swap them. Uh, you want me to put this down? Over there. Over there? Yeah. It's going through the mic. Oh, it's going through. Oh, oh, I see. Um, Thanks, Don. It can be used in desktop mode with a detachable backpack strap and one that we actually covered very recently, freaking cool, is the GTX 1080 Mini. The world's most compact GTX 1080 at only 8.3 inches long. Now, some people were complaining about our thumbnail on that one. They were saying, you didn't cut the GTX 1080. Oh. Come on, guys! It was like a visual gag. Like yeah. it was in a vice because it's being made. And I wasn't. The the point wasn't that I was cutting it. Even the point was that no. I was like crunching it in. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna like cut off part of the like that's not cutting the PCB is not gonna help me making it more compact like they did. Is anyway cool card though, right? Yes, very. Okay, yeah. so if you're looking to build the most powerful they compact had... machine or just buy one, Zotac is an awesome place to go, and you can check out their products on Newegg today. I'm excited to the, for the next time that I meet up with those guys, because I know a bunch of the guys that work at Zotac, and ladies, um, and see what they th think about the beginning, where I roast them for like not giving a proper use case for it at all. And then the entire video being like giving it a proper use case. Yeah. They had no idea I was going to do that. That wasn't a collaborative effort with no, them at all. No, uh, I think a lot of people assume that we're like, you know, working with manufacturers on some <laughs> no. things, but really we're working against them. Yeah. It that happens. was sort of a giant troll. Okay. Because I, I love those guys. So, uh, okay. <laughs> I think I figured out what the issue was. It was not it was not the headphones. Oh no. Okay. So, I think we are ready Is for it this video call. I hope wait. I don't see I don't know if I see an option for video. I Okay, yep. Yeah, we're we're doing a thing. Oh. Okay. Okay. I guess that's the video we're sending. I guess I guess uh well no no, we should we should see them in a moment. The Google Effects and Draw apps will no longer work after April 25th. You're probably going to want to maximize this, or at the very least, minimize what's behind it. Yes, I, I can maximize this, I hope. Oh, 
Oh, oh, okay, hold on. You guys are muted. You guys are muted right now. Uh, Luke, do you want to pull the stream up just on your laptop? Just sure. Make, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, try again. Keep talking, Paul. I can't hear them at all. You can't hear us? Can hear nothing. You can you they cannot hear, hear us. You. Yeah, I think you need to honest. enable the mic on your what? laptop. Yeah, yeah, what? I got this. I got this. I got this. Uh, but none, of your, none of your sound is coming through. Okay, oh, hold on, hold on. How about now? <laughs> yeah, much better. You can Kyle's hear us. Okay, okay. Here we go. We are screen sharing. Um, uh, have we checked Twitch chat? Did, can they hear them? Um, so far, no one is saying that they can't. That's uh, so great now. Okay. Uh, may I ask, as professional video creators, why it is that you guys might have opted to um, vertical? film vertically? Uh, Hangouts would not let me. Uh, yeah. How's it's that? more ergonomic. Hey. Hold it this way. There we go. Okay. Hold on. Now I gotta. I gotta move us out of. The, okay. Okay. So. So uh, we're framed in the bottom left of the frame. So if you guys could go kind of top right. That would be swell. Yeah, okay, other right, other right, other right. Right. Okay, you know what, that just way? cover Kyle. Let's just cover <laughs> Kyle, because I hate that guy. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so... <laughs> so we have, we have a super crazy, exciting announcement that we... Damn it, Kyle. Okay, I'm gonna put us like down here. There. Yeah. Now, now we can see there you guys. Okay. You're not doing anything. Okay. <laughs> You're just standing here. Get your shit together, Linus. Exactly. You're not doing anything. Oh. Useless. Oh. I think you're useful. Okay, but I'm holding the phone. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out exactly how useful you guys are pretty Ooh. soon. Uh, so I, I, you know what? I, I want, I want you guys to do it. I want you guys to do it. But what, what's going on next week? Uh, next week, uh, we, we're gonna have, that's, well, that's part of it, that's afterwards. Sorry. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna be participating. Winner, winning team on top. He's got Woo! Yeah. 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 yeah, that's right, we're okay. Down. We're the, going, the gauntlet has been thrown down. Oh, we're going down, are we? Oh. Because, oh, yeah. Yeah. because if, if, if I thought, if I thought we were going down, don't you think I might not have challenged you guys on your own turf? If well, obviously I, you have you have a little bit too much confidence, I think at this point. Me, <laughs> if, if I let's thought, let's try your hair. If I, spin around here. See that right there? What what what, what is that? America? American flag? America? That's that's the world's second tallest thermometer. <laughs> yeah. What do you second guys have? Tallest. What do you have? What yeah. what do we have? Well, we. We have a country that doesn't get so hot that we're concerned about the temperature all the time. Actually, we're pretty concerned. We're just yeah, the other direction. Yeah, well, that's why when, when yeah. we go down, when yeah. it goes down look, the next week, yeah. you guys are just going to burn. You know, you're you're going to get here, and you're just going to melt under pressure. Melt under you pressure. You, you, you don't even understand how melting works, do you? Because when you apply pressure <laughs> to ice, it melts. Yeah, you're right, but that's, I, but that's I've proved Kyle's point there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly. You might not understand it, but I'm gonna witness it next week. Wow. <laughs> All right, so thanks, guys. You guys are on mobile data right now, right? Yeah, it's okay though. The pulse phone, it's fine. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, it's Do we even know like what, data what? here in the United States? Okay. Do All we right. Know the terms. Okay, so so basically, here's what's going down. I'll I'll I'll. Phone is playing music because Steve started the car. I'll, I'll spell this out for the audience. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of lay down what's going on here. Luke and I are traveling down to L.A. And we are going to be taking on Paul and Kyle in a two-on-two -two team battle. And this is really annoying, guys. You're not funny. Um, okay, so we are going to be taking on Paul and Kyle in a two-on-two -two team battle to see who is going to be the ultimate Scrapyard War champion. That's right, my friends. We don't know exactly what the budget's going to be or exactly what the challenge is going to be, but... Uh, this it's gonna be a thing, crazy. and it's gonna be crazy. Are we All right. Just, like deciding on the spot. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll think about it this weekend. I've been really busy. <laughs> Very well planned. Yes. All right. So yes. thanks, guys. We're gonna get back to the Thank Wan you. Show and enjoy the rest of your road trip. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy Canada. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Have fun in Canada. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> okay. We can ditch these now. All right. Yeah. Let's get let's get rid of these and. Uh, Okay. So yeah, we don't we don't know the. I was actually wondering last night. I was like, huh, 
What are the what are the terms? What are we actually doing this time? I yeah. have no idea. Not a clue. We're doing a team battle. That yes. that that is what we're doing. And just in case you guys didn't get it from that, uh, Linus and I are on the same team. Yes. Yeah. So this will be the first time that's happened since like extremely in, early Channel Super Fun. Yeah, in four in four seasons of Scrapyard Wars, Luke and I have always competed against each other. And I have always lost. So if we could win this time, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> you haven't always lost. I believe I. Oh no, I didn't. That's true. You won um, the water cooling one. The water cooling one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you shouldn't have. No, but <laughs> neither of us have. <laughs> neither have of us should have won. Everybody <laughs> should have lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That I was thought I, I thought I had the last one. That no. was really close. What was the point spread? Oh, I don't remember. It was like half a point, something or like ridiculous. one point, or something yeah. like that. Like yeah. it was ridiculously close. Yeah. But uh, either but, way, so you haven't lost every one, but my record is still pretty good. Yes. Three and one. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with my record. Yeah. Here's, here's a question. How should we decide who gets who? Oh wait, no. We, Oh yeah, I, I got confused. I confused myself. Because oh, like when we did it with Bob and Rod, we decided. We, we later. decided yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. no, it's you and me versus yeah. Paul. Oh yeah. man, this is gonna be crazy. It's the the craziest part. I think is gonna like for us at least, and this should probably translate to the show. Is we're not on home turf anymore. I don't like Craigslist is not a thing everywhere. It's it's very like very Eastern, much a thing down there. Eastern though. Canada, not a thing though. Yeah, that's true. But like, aside from that, like up here, there's like red flag deals. And yeah. There's like free geek and, like, and Kijiji and whatever. We have no idea exactly Even what we're walking familiarity into. familiarity with like when you're looking on something like Craigslist, the city name, and like knowing how far away that where actually is, is. Pasadena. I don't. I've been where there. Is, I don't really know where it is in relation to things though. I was in a car and then I showed up in Pasadena. Traffic is going to be a thing. Yeah. Like we're going to be in LA, so traffic is going to be tough. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be it's going to be cray cray. Anyway, that was the big news, the big news for today. We also have other news because I think Timeline should we give them when we're doing it? Oh, it's yeah. going to be a yeah, long definitely. time until it's done. Because yes. like editing for these things takes forever. There's so many cameras that are running a huge percentage of the time, yeah. and it has to be edited like a show, and each one of the episodes are super long. We yeah. kind of sort of want to be done, like kind of all of them before we launch. Yes. What's the idea? Is that Ed? No, that's Dennis. Oh, that oh, is that Ed. Is hey, Ed, uh, what's the plan for the Scrapyard War season five I'm sure editing? That was both of them. Uh, probably next year. We'll okay. see. Next a year. Eighteen yeah. launch. A full eighteen episodes. Eighteen episodes. Eighteen episodes. You know what? Get out of here. <laughs> we're, we're also going to have a Kickstarter. Okay. For the movie. Oh, Scrapyard Kickstarter Wars for Scrapyard Wars the movie. Very nice. What would that even be? What would Scrapyard... Okay, bye. Thank you. What would Scrapyard Wars the movie be? character <laughs> progression. Oh, All man. right. Anyways, so, the editing's going to take a while, but yeah. we're filming it starting Monday. Starting Monday, yep. yeah. In all seriousness, Ed takes about a week to edit per episode, and what we'd really like to do is cut together the entire season at once and then find episodic splits yeah. so we don't end up with kind of slower episodes and then kind of like really exciting ones so we can so we can space out the moments appropriately it'll probably be three parts if it ends up being completely bananas it could be four but, but probably probably three very yeah. unlikely yeah yeah and like, it's, yeah, just release one thing. It would end up being like three and a half hours or something stupid. No. Well, 45 minute episodes. So an Are hour they? and a half. Oh, that's right. He did really long episodes yeah. last time, didn't so he? So like an hour and a half to the two hours and 15 minutes for three episodes. So long and short of it three is. Three hours for. That's not happening. It's yeah. not happening for a lot of reasons. Number one is that very long format videos do not perform as well no. on YouTube. So we would be shooting ourselves in the foot for really no good reason. Um, number two is that Scrapyard Wars requires an entire team of us, in this case, to go travel somewhere for an entire week to film. Then it requires many weeks of our editor's time to cut it together. And float plane week. And, and yeah. there will be a one week early access window on Scrapyard Wars for Float Plane Club. 
You ready, Boiler? I'm not. We'll figure it out. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm pretty sure that Float Playing Club ready. is going to be experiencing some some newfound popularity <laughs> uh, right around the time that these start these start coming out. Yeah. Um, people are like, that's BS. It's like, no, objectively, that is not BS. It is objectively very expensive for us to produce, so we are getting multiple and, episodes out hey, of it, and that's how it's going to work. It's not like YouTube's not going to have content. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. If you didn't hear this announcement, you wouldn't even know until right. the first episode launched on YouTube. But you did. And then it would show up every week after that anyways. Yep. But we planted the seed. So it's there. I've planted a few it. seeds in my day. <laughs> Minimum three. I can't anymore. <laughs> but you know how it is. <laughs> All right. I don't yet, but I plan to. Twitter. Our original article here is from Reuters. Twitter explores a subscription-based option for the first time. Wow. So they're considering whether to build a premium version of the popular TweetDeck interface aimed at professionals, uh, raising the possibility that it could collect subscription fees from some users for the first time. Wah, wah, wah. Because even with 319 million users, isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Twitter has failed to attract enough in advertising revenue to turn a profit. So they're now conducting a survey to assess the interest in a new, more enhanced version of TweetDeck. Um, personally, I might be willing to pay for team management tools, but they would have to not be trash. Um, they would have to be really good. We tried playing around with Hootsuite and like, Honestly, there, there was nobody in this building who was like, this is a good idea. Let's keep using this. Sorry, Hootsuite. We know you're like Vancouver locals. Yeah, yeah. Love and all that. Guys. But, but we, we, didn't, we didn't like it. It might be for some teams. <clears throat> it's not for our team. Speaking of planting seeds, the original article here is from ctvnews.ca. Imagine a world where there could be a smartphone app that would let you test no. the quality of your sperm. Okay, so what, what we need now is like a weird social network based off of this, where you can like compete in quality against other people. So you want to gamify and then, sperm quality. And then you can make a like Tinder style based app where it just shows a picture and a number for their quality level. Okay, so you can just, Darren's like, yep. <laughs> so in a nutshell, there's an optical attachment that connects to a smartphone <laughs> and a thankfully disposable device for loading a semen sample. Um, <laughs> the cost of the materials used to so, uh, hold on, blah 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 blah. The smartphone-based device detected abnormal semen samples based on WHO thresholds of sperm concentration and mobility with an accuracy of 98%. And the cost of the materials used to assemble it was $4.45. So basically, this is like a way of bringing low-cost sperm analysis to the world. And social networks based on it. Wow, no. Make it. Wow, Do no. It. Every Hazy, Teak, one of you, website idea, go for gold. All right, so if you felt like... The Weasley's clock in Harry Potter was something that you needed in your life. Google has some amazing news for you. The original article here is from, am I allowed to say this? Wow. Thehindu.com? Sure. I guess so. I thought that was like a, like, a, like a racist thing. I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't really know, though, because I'm behind the times on, like, I, I, don't, I never know what's approved terms. Yeah, I don't know what's politically correct or incorrect. It changes so fast. <laughs> I know. Um, Google Maps users will soon be able to broadcast their movements to friends and family. Google believes the new tool will be more convenient way will be a more convenient way for people to let someone know where they are without having to text or call them. Could cause friction in relationships if one partner demands, demands to know where the other one is at all times. That's when you break up with them. Uh, or if parents insist their teenagers turn on location sharing options before they go out, that's unfortunate. They're your parents. I don't know what to say to you. Um, I've got people saying Hindu is a religion. No, Hinduism is a religion. Uh, that's different. Apparently, Hindu is a person who follows the religion of Hinduism. Okay. I, I thought it was like a derogatory thing. Goes to show you what I know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so either. <laughs> All I said was, I don't know, PC terms change fast. But, like, I've never heard of it as a derogatory term. 
Ed is just judging me. What, what can I help you with, Ed? Okay. Okay. Uh, Dell. Dell has put their 32 inch 8K display on sale. Did I hang out this to you? Because I was going to ask, like, do we have one lined up? Yes, we do. Okay, yeah. Okay, we, I thought so. I saw this news and I was like, we got to have one coming. We have, uh, we would basically get on our knees and do whatever it is Dell asked us to do to get our hands on one of these. Are we going to remake 8K gaming? Because you um, could do 8K gaming on one native monitor instead of splitting it across bezels and all that kind of I, I've stuff. actually got a few things in mind for this. Like, okay. this is... Yeah. Uh, what if you get four of them? I don't think they'll send me... F I don't think there's a system on Earth that could run four <laughs> of them. Actually... We could make one. Okay, hold on a minute. Let me think for a second here. We would need... Okay, so basically... Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's back up a little bit. 32 inches, 8K... Now for sale, five grand. Don't worry about it. Oh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> to drive it, oh. you need, I believe it's DisplayPort 1.3. So there's that. Uh, let me have a look here. I'm just going to, I want to double check that. So the inputs, it has two DisplayPort 1.4s. And the way you hook it up is with, um, da 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 da. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba, overall of that 8K, etc. How do you hook it up, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Uh, dang it, Ian. He like skimmed over it, so I can't remember exactly. Yeah, it doesn't say. Okay, I can't remember if two DisplayPort 1.3s or two DisplayPort 1.4s are required. But what I do know is that you will need. There are no consumer graphics cards right now that support either of those standards. So there's that. So you're going to need a Pascal-based Quadro. Okay. So one of those... We only need four of those. Yeah, so we only need four of those. We would basically need P6000s, four of them. Okay. Which are like $5,000 graphics cards in their own right. And each of them would be able to drive one display. I met a guy from PNY at, uh, at PAX East. So I know people from PNY. They still won't send us anything. <laughs> you guys, you guys, oh. And my system restarted. That's okay, though, because we've got, mine still we've got Luke's screen. Yeah. But um, that would be sick, and I feel like people should get behind that. Okay, so you think people should, what, tell Dell and PNY to send us four each. Yes. So a $40,000 display and graphics card setup. That's literally half as much as some other videos that you've made. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very true thing that you said, and I will not dispute it. Okay. I, I think we should try to do this. I that would actually be really cool. I would want to watch that. If I saw oh, that lady. on a title of a video, I'd be like, you know what? Yeah. I'll click on that. I'll watch this guy play, like, Counter-Strike or something. At 16K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You should, you should do a test to see, like, how close people have to get before they can think that they see it. Well, person. I've seen it. It's crazy. Yeah. Like it's bananas. Yeah. They had a they had a, a a desktop wallpaper with like a bazillion clocks and you could like read them all. And they were all like this big. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, wanna move on to our next topic because yes. I don't have a computer working. Because uh, Windows ten. Thank you, Windows ten. Uh, I'm like dead in the water here. I mean, look at this. To, a lot of these are like... Look at this bull crap. It's still just getting ready. Why wasn't it getting ready before it made me not able to use my computer? Like, couldn't you get ready before you interrupt my stuff? So GameStop expects the Switch oh. to be hard to find all the way through 2017. This is an Ars Technica article. Apparently there was a GameStop sales call. So this is something that happens when you have like shareholders and stuff and you have public calls where like you talk about how well you're doing and whatnot. And they talked about uh, the Switch launch. And they were talking about different things that sold with the Switch and how much demand there is for the Switch. And if you've, if you've heard any news about that from retailers, apparently this is one of the best console launches in like a while. Like, better than the Xboxes and PlayStation's console launches. Which is interesting, but I don't know if you can take it 100% because hmm. uh, stock was out. Right. So they're getting a lot of calls being like, oh, can we get it? And they're out of stock. They're not actual sales numbers, right? Right. So And people aren't taking 
unlimited pre-orders. Oh. I don't know, like, any store that's doing unlimited pre-orders. Just because so, they're not sure when they're going to get anything. Yeah. So this seems to be a supply issue, potentially, rather than a demand issue. Yeah. But, that being said, there is a lot of genuine interest in the Switch. And they started talking about some fairly interesting things as well, in my opinion, which is, like, uh, the I think the average amount of things bought along with just the Switch console was four. Really? So, like, people bought a lot of stuff. And, I mean, and surely it wasn't games, because well, there aren't any. And there was almost a one-to-one parody between people that bought a Switch and people that bought... Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, like, everyone getting the Switch is getting it for Breath of the Wild. And that's probably a good thing, because 1-2 Switch is sort of not great. I covered that in my video. Yeah. Okay. But they're expecting supply issues all the way through 2017, which is not that surprising. Uh, where is it? This explains why oh, our... Oh, no, it's 5.5 products. The average Switch buyer at GameStop also bought 5.5 related products. That's outstanding. Including both Switch games and accessories, along with the system. They're picking up anything they can. <laughs> yeah. Breath of the Wild was almost a one-to-one -one result. Every Switch customer buys a copy of that game, essentially. That's ridiculous. Well, good for Nintendo. I really wasn't sure on this one, to be perfectly honest with you. I think the thing is, with Nintendo, you, you really can't be sure about like any of them. Right. And then just, who knows? Because they just do weird stuff, and then maybe it works, and then maybe it doesn't. Yeah. And they have the money to just do that, because they're Nintendo. And everyone, every time it goes bad, everyone will be like, Oh my god, Nintendo's going to go bankrupt! And they don't realize how much like insane amounts of money they have in the bank. And it's like, oh, okay. Um, they're fine. Speaking of game companies that like don't get it... Uh, Ubisoft. So the original poster here was someone on the forum because it's not in the dock and I have it open on my phone because my computer's still restarting. But according to an article from shacknews.com, Ubisoft came out and said, <laughs> when, when, uh, when a fan on Reddit calculated that collecting every piece of cosmetic content like outfits and emotes and for honor would cost a whopping $700, <laughs> they said that... We never had an intention for you to unlock everything in the game. That's so stupid. So how, yeah, I was just, <laughs> you beat me to the punch. I was going to ask, how does that make a completionist like you feel? Actually, like, very specifically frustrated, because you're right. <laughs> that really annoys me. I've 100%ed I've Black Flag multiple times, and Ubisoft was already really bad for, like, just putting random crap all over the map and needing you to go collect it all, and then someone like me will actually go do it because they're stupid. Um, I will admit Hold on, this. I've it's got okay. more. I've got more for you. Oh, no. For us, that doesn't really make any sense. We apply... Oh, you're going to kill me. We, we applied RPG oh. mechanics on top of a fighting game in a PvP environment. So? Let's say in World of Warcraft, you would never try to unlock everything for so all So many people do! For all the characters! They're called achievement hunters! Same, Stop it! Same thing in any MOBA. There, do you feel better now? No! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, there are so many people in WoW that go for all the achievements. Loremaster is one of the most ridiculous ones, where you have to complete just like all the quests everywhere. And I know people that just do that. Oh, oh, that's I know fantastic. people that will play one expansion behind because they don't want to join like a raiding guild and stuff. Yeah. But they want to complete everything in the achievement book that they can. So when the expansion passes, some of the stuff in the achievement book goes away. And they'll try to get as much of that as they can because then you get uh, feats of strength. Like, oh, you can't do this anymore, but you did in the past, so it's called the feat of strength. Or you just go back to the raids and do them by yourself or with a small group of people and right. then you complete all the challenges and get those achievement points. Those people exist. There's a lot of them. <sighs> Man, you're so upset. That's great. It's annoying. And like, if you really, really like a game, it's fun to just like, every once in a while, you just want to jump in that game and play for whatever reason. And having a goal of like, you know what? I've beat this game before, but I just want to kind of tool around and do some cool stuff. Having a bunch of stuff there is fine. That's cool. Being like, yeah, no, it's stupid and it'll cost you $700 and no one's going to complete it ever. Screw you. That's not a cool way to do things. <laughs> All right. You know what is cool though? Android, oh, oh. A million new settings. A million new settings and an awesome snooze feature according to Ars Technica. So the developer preview is here and there's lots of new, many, many of which are boring changes. So you can do a system-wide notification snore. 
Um, if you don't want to deal with the notification right now, you just pull it to the side a bit to unveil a new clock icon, and then it'll be snoozed for 15 minutes. You can tap on a menu to increase it to 30 minutes or an hour. Okay. The top of the notification panel has been reworked yet again. Uh, the triple function quick settings buttons are back. So tapping on the icon does one thing, tapping on the text does a second function, and long pressing the icon does a third thing. So, um, okay. Ambient display is a, low power or is a low power notification mode that kicks in when the screen is off. So when the notification comes in or when the device is moved or tapped on, the screen will light up briefly with a white on black UI to show you new notifications. Am I crazy balls or did that not already exist? Because um, I even have a stock pixel. And like, no, okay, no tapping tap it doesn't, it do, anything. doesn't do it. Moving it does. Yeah, and if so I get a notification. So moving it gives you that. And I guess it's it's slightly colored? No. No, no. not black and white. Okay. And the settings app has been totally reworked. What I want to know is if they figured out why my phone gets so hot in my pocket when I'm not doing anything. <laughs> and that that's not in our summary here, but may, maybe <laughs> maybe they finally figured that out. That would be super cool. Even the Pixel does it from time to time. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I've I've experienced that with pretty much every You know Android what Android phone. phone doesn't do that though? The iPhone. See, I lied. It was oh, like okay. a, I was tricking you gotcha. because it's not an Android yeah. phone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was expecting you to say like the Galaxy or a dead like, one or the Nexus <laughs> S or like so yeah, 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 <laughs> a dead one. <laughs> it's not gonna get hot if it can't. There we go. You know what kind of men don't tell stories? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much it for the WAN show. Thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. I probably won't be here, but Luke probably will. Yeah, so what's you. how? So yeah, I'll be back, but you're not. You so will be back. So I'm actually staying down for a second collab, this time with Austin. Yeah. Uh, Austin is getting like Petabyte Project Mini. Okay. And we're going to be working with what him is on that? that. How is it a petabyte project then? Well, because it's not a petabyte, but it's a lot of storage. Okay. And it's a project. Is it half a pet? You just eh. no, it's not half. Okay. Yeah, but it's 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 a lot though. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll see you guys again next week. Blah blah blah. Uh, intro. <laughs> that moss ever sponsored us again. <laughs> we eventually got through. <laughs> Did we get there? I think so. It was a voyage of discovery. <laughs> Predator. We're still live.